it's time to mess with the name board. Well, we got this up here. Beautiful. You can see the old leaf there. That needs to be scraped out. We got some chips, paint stuff. On the back side, a lot of old bedding compound, old chunks of the transom, and it kind of, it's not real bad, but it's got a, it's got a, what I call a library smell. Now it's a pleasing smell. Um, when I first pulled it off, though, you could smell rot. You could smell the rotten wood. But, I mean, the, the transom, or the name board, it's solid. You know, we might find a pocket here or there, but I don't think so. I think it's pretty solid. I think the, the smell was from the transom, right? The, the bits of transom that are on it. So, that's, that's what I think. But, we've got the strip that thing we got to get it all nice so it can go on the transom so Whew. man as i'm getting into this it stinks it, it really stinks like rotten wood. I mean, yeah, it stinks. It's solid, but I guess, I don't know, from the transom, we'll, we'll know more when we get it straight, but buddy, it stinks. I'm, I might get a mask. We got the, uh, the glop off. And you know what? I'm actually really surprised. It, it's nowhere near what I thought it was going to be. I, I've i never, never smelled something so bad, <laughs> like rot-wise. This smelled like the most sharpest, sharpest rot. I mean, just this... As I was scraping the stuff off, this sharp, rotten, crypt smell. I mean, it's, I had to put my mask on. It, it kind of even gave me a headache. I mean, it's like pretty gnarly. So I figured, I was like, well, this thing's going to be rotten. But it's not. Even the soft, you know, there's like a little area. It looks like it might be pucky. Solid. You know, everywhere. Like this. See this? Solid. So, I guess, the only thing I can figure, you know, the transom was rotten, right? That old dolphinite or whatever bedding compound they had on there. From what I understand, this name board has been on there, I think, since it was built. I, I think. Um, so, just years and years and years and years of absorbing rot smell. Ugh, buddy. Rough. It was really, really rough. But... That's good. So the name board isn't rotten. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to sand it now. Just get a better idea. See if I can remove some more. It's going to clog the crap out of some sandpaper. But I'd like to get the remaining little bit of dolphinite or whatever that is off of there. It's got to be. It's it's either dolphinite or somebody handmade the same idea. You know, it's definitely a, a natural-based bedding compound, which is good. Um... Yeah, so we're going to sand it down and then really get a look at the wood and, and see what it looks like without all that on there. anywhere which is good it's all nice and solid I uh, you know it's not even obviously 
thing was hand carved. Even the back of it was hand carved. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to put a rot resistant primer on it and then let it, let it dry overnight and then start messing with the front side of it. That's painted, primed, so we'll just wait till tomorrow and we will revisit it. Okay, this is dry. So now we're gonna look at what to do with the front of it. I could figure it out. It's gonna need a couple of things, I think, but let's take a look. Okay, looking at it, it's kind of rough. I wanna, I wanna, take a scraper to it you know and lift all of the loose paint yep got to strip out the old leaf it looks to me like somebody varnished over the paint see it's not this isn't dirt this is like varnish so they painted it and then varnished it so that's okay but yeah we, we got to get the old gold leaf out and then make this thing look good as new. Now, normally, I would suggest doing this with a heat gun, right? Put a heat gun on it and scrape it back. This is so dry and crusty, listen. It just... It just rips right off. Like it's not even hardly adhered at all. So we're just gonna scrape it off. I'm losing daylight. <laughs> I'll have to keep working on this tomorrow. The um, It doesn't smell so bad anymore either. Um, now that I got all that funky old bedding compound off of it, that was horrible. Uh, now that I got that off, it just kind of smells, smells like an old library. <laughs> I actually like it. I like the smell of it. Um, but it's a thing as solid as can be. So uh, awesome. All right, well... I gotta put all my tools away. Time and tide wait for no man. See you in the morning. So, <clears throat> it's the next day and we're gonna keep cracking on it. So I couldn't get these lines to go away. So I decided to strip it to wood because I thought this was a decal or, you know, gold leaf or paint or something that was outlined. That's what I thought. I was wrong, look. This is actually inlaid. See that? So at some point, the name board had been carved and inlaid with different wood. See, I mean, it's, it's a different kind of wood. It's an inlay. Isn't that crazy? But so it was carved, inlaid, and then someone carved it again for the gold leaf. So this does present a little bit of a challenge because, well, around some of the inlaying, see here, it's cracked. Look at that. 
Yep. So we got to fill that. We have to have yeah, epoxy behind it and ferret off. So, yeah, it's a good thing I stripped it. All right. So that's what we got to do. We're going to continue sanding it down. I want it all sanded. And then we're going to start addressing this stuff and the wood grain itself. Let's do that. I want to seal the wood, right? I want to get it all sealed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some epoxy and acetone. And uh, like I've covered before, that you can't bond anything with that, but it's great for sealing wood. So this way, we'll get maximum wood grain fill. Uh, it'll seal everything. And where these cracks are, around the letters. See where the inlays are? Every single one of these suckers is cracked. So, I'm going to have to fill all that. I mean, it's cracked all in everywhere. It was cracked under the paint, and we just couldn't see it. So, now we know it's there. So, the epoxy and acetone is going to soak in there, right? It's going to soak in, soak in, soak in, soak in. And that'll seal everything underneath it. And then I can actually fill these cracks. Just in the nick of time, too. <laughs> the light's gone. Man, the sun's gone down. I, I couldn't have, couldn't have finished that any better. It looks great. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Get a little gnat for bonus points. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, then we'll uh, let that dry and sand it down and start getting paint on it. Alright. Let's see, uh, let's see how it's looking. It's been a been actually a day and a half for the uh, for the primer to dry it's it's oil-based primer so I like to give it you know a little bit of time if I'm really gonna be sanding it and and we are so I wanted to give it enough time to dry and it should be let's see how it looks well actually it looked pretty good not too bad so this is just the boat primer nice and pretty and pink and actually you know what looks pretty good I'm not seeing a lot of cracks or breaks or things we got to repair too much. Um, this stuff leaves pretty heavy brush strokes, but it's extremely durable primer, which is good. Here's a tip for you guys. If you're trying to sand something with complicated curves and stuff like that, wad up your sandpaper. Just wad it up. Get it all wrinkled and softened up. Sometimes the edges here can scratch. And uh, we don't want that. So I wad it up, make it really, really, really soft and pliable. And that, that'll help me get into these curves and all around this. Because this, this thing is very curvy. It's like, so we, we, wanna, we want this as pliable as possible.
Okay, so the plan here, I have these things. They're sprayers, right? They, uh, they spray anything. You can spray glues, you can spray, spray oil paints. So I got this set up here, see? So what I wanna do is I wanna spray it. This will go a lot faster and help it to lay down. It's a little windy today, so I don't know. You know, worst thing happens, it gets a coat of paint on it and then I gotta sand it all back down. But we're gonna try this. The tricky thing about oil paints and these, you have to thin it properly. Thin it too much, it's crap. Don't thin it enough, it'll clog and it won't spray out. So it's kind of tricky. I, I made up my own paint. I, I do that a lot. I say made up my paint. I don't actually mean that I took like linseed oil and mixed it. I don't do that, no. I mix custom colors together of paint that already exists. So when it comes to colors, like the color I'm gonna put on the hull, is gonna be a little bit more vivid than what you see there. Um, and the antique white color of the decks, I really like. I didn't have any of that. That was painted in New Zealand, so from the previous owner. So I just mixed up my own custom antique white color. The plan is this part, right, is gonna be antique white. I want this to be a nice, I want it to look like an old 1700, 1700s naval officer's uniform or 1800s, you know. This will be the, a nice antique white. This will be the same blue as the hull. And this, of course, will be 24 karat gold leaf in here. So it should look super classic. It should pop. Uh, that's the goal. We just want it to gleam and pop and, and, and really be beautiful and classic and very, very nautical. So anyway, let's get to trying to mix this paint up and see what we can come up with. So a couple of things we need to do. We're going to use this. It's just a cheap dollar store strainer just to strain any potential chunks out of here we're also going to be using turpentine to thin it so when you thin oil paint with turpentine it can have a tendency to over thin it which is a good thing because we want to use very little and try to get it you know pretty thin so we're going to try to do that i got to mix up this paint as you can see it's <laughs> Nothing but resin at the top. So let's get it all mixed up. All right, it's coming along. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little turpentine into the mix and measure cup. To put that in first and that's probably way plenty we're not going to be doing a lot here now we got to kind of balance this guy on here okay and that's probably way way plenty all right And I think that's a good first coat. We'll just let that dry. Yeah, that looks great. Yep, not too bad at all. But uh, yeah, there we go. So now there's the paint saved for later. And then this is just uh, mineral spirits. I use mineral spirits to clean it out. Turpentine to thin it, but mineral spirits to clean out the, uh, the sprayer thingy. So there we go. I want that to set for just a minute before I pull the tape. I don't. I don't really like to pull it when it's super duper wet, but uh, we'll pull the tape, let that sit till tomorrow, and then do another coat. It's dry now. It's been 24 hours. You don't really have to sand oil paint before you go back over it, right? However, especially because I'm spraying it, I want to see where I've been. So I'm going to use 1500 grit sandpaper, and all that's going to do is kind of dull it a little bit, just so I can see where it's white right so it's really hard to see so i just want to sand it a little 
just to dull it so I can see when I'm spraying it on if I'm getting a good coat. Once again, another beautiful coat. Look at that. And this is the final, final coat of the white. Yeah. So from this, now we have to let it cure for a few days before I can tape anything off. Um, I might even let it cure for a week and do other projects on the boat um, so that paint can cure nice and hard. Then I can sand these edges and do all this in the blue that I want to do. And then it'll be gilding the letters. So, but man, didn't that look, that look great? Just turned out awesome. Very, very awesome. Okay, it's been a few days. The white paint has gotten hard. Um, I've done kind of a, another last little sanding down of everything. And now we're gonna do the blue paint. So we gotta tape it off. So we sprayed the uh, white, but we're gonna brush the blue on here. Um, there's no need. The white we sprayed because of the letters. I wanted it to be perfect in the letters. The blue we're gonna brush. I like the look of a brushed finished brush finish anyway. So that's what we are going to do. Yeah, overall, man, looks awesome. Yep, just awesome. Great, good deal. So we'll let this um, we'll let this cure for a day or two, and then we'll put another coat on. Now it's time for the gold leaf. And we don't want to do any of this stuff outside. It's just too dusty um, when we actually get to applying the leaf. The tiniest little breath of air is whew, and your leaf is gone. So um, for this, for all of this part of it, I'm gonna do that in the boat. The first thing I need to do is I've got two coats of gloss on here, but I need to uh, I need to do a thousand grit sandpaper and sand in here just just for the the size size is the adhesive you'll see but uh, I'll explain all that here in a minute let me get this sanded down now it's time we talk about the adhesive for the leaf there are a few different kinds. There's uh, oil-based, which is what most people will be doing for an exterior project, uh, is using oil-based size. That's really good, really adhesive, really weatherproof. Uh, it's great. The only thing about the oil-based stuff is it takes forever uh, to get tacky. So you have to usually wait. I've waited as much as 11 to 18 hours or more. Um, to get it tacky and then you only have so long to work it you know it only stays tacky for so long so it's okay it's just kind of a pain in the butt a faster route 
would be a water-based size, but that's only for interior use. You don't want to put that on the transom of a boat. It'll just get washed off. It's not going to work. Then there's another, there's another one. Instacol. Right? This is size size is adhesive. That's that's what they call gold leaf adhesive. It's, it's called size. But uh this, I believe it is actually a water-based system, but it is it's perfectly acceptable for outdoors. And what they call this stuff is a liquid burnishing. So when you do gilding, gold leaf gilding, you can burnish it to get a real, real high polish. But that's a little bit different process. To do the kind of leaf we're doing to get that kind of high gloss, you need this. But what makes this stuff special, right? I'm going to paint this in the letters, and then I'm going to let it dry overnight. Um, then it has an activator, which is what makes this so awesome. At any time, forever, I can just reactivate it. Right, so when you're laying leaf, a lot of times you'll put the leaf in there and it'll crack, right? If it cracks, you might be able to get some more leaf in there. You might not. Then you have to add more size. Then you have to wait. And you have to do it. It's a pain in the rear end. This, you let it dry, and at any time, you can just go back and activate it. Uh, so while I'm leafing, I'll activate one letter at a time do the leaf, you put it on there, you wait five minutes, it becomes active. If I missed a spot, if something flakes off, if something cracks, I can just go back and reactivate just the size and not have to apply more size, not have to apply more anything. So this is the way to go. There are, it's pretty specific. Um, I ordered all this stuff. I get it from Golden Leaf. This is my old timey link. <laughs> this is the place. Golden Leaf, um, and I get everything from there. I've got my the brushes I'm going to put the the Instacall on, and if you just look on Instacall, it'll it'll tell you everything you know that you're recommended to get. So I don't have to go into that. But if you're interested in doing this, look up that site. It's the best site I've found for it. Uh, once again, I'm not sponsored by them, but I'm not opposed to it. <laughs> if, if you want to pay me to use your size. You just, uh, just let me know. All right, let's get into this. So this has dried a bit, enough that we can get another coat on. Um, and I'm going to put this coat on a little bit thicker than the last one. You really want this actually to be pretty thick, and that's kind of a difference. Regular size you put on very, very thin, but this Instacall stuff, you actually want a little bit thicker coat. It just uh, it works better and helps it lay better. Okay, so the Instacall base, or size, is perfectly dry. So we need to do the activator, right? And we'll activate it. I'll show you how to do that. But we're going to go over our list of things we need. Kind of like epoxy, right? I like to get everything I need all in one place. So you need your gilder's tips, right? This is what we're going to be applying the leaf with. This is a tool to get the leaf into tight places. Here's our leaf. We are using genuine gold leaf. Uh, you can use 23 karat and that'll work as well. I like to use 24 karat uh, and it'll last a long time. It won't tarnish, it won't corrode. 
Anyway, so we have our leaf, we've got our tips, we have our activator, I've got brushes. You need petrolatum, uh, some people call it petroleum jelly, or Vaseline, and I'll show you what this is for. This is, this is how the tips will pick up the leaf, All right? So the first step, we need to activate this. The reason why I like the Instacall versus regular size is I have a little bit more control over everything. So normally I would have done all this size and then I would have had a, a set amount of time to leaf the entire board, which this is gonna take hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. This is a very slow process and that's, once again, kind of why it's awesome. It's very meditative work, uh, beautifying things. But because of the Instacall, I like to activate one letter at a time, right? So if the other ones are sticky, then a, an, an errant piece of leaf can blow over and stick here, and I don't want that. I want it to only be in here. But the activator, the way it works, we're gonna apply the activator very fine with a brush, and we have to use a brush because it's carved letters. So you can't get, normally you would use a, a cotton ball or a tissue and you could wipe it in there because you want to put a very thin coat of activator on here. But important is the activator has to dry five to 10 minutes and then it'll leave this sticky for about 60 minutes, for about an hour. So I'll wait 10 minutes after I do it. I'll do one letter, then I'll do the next, then the next, then the next. So there is, since there's, you know, you gotta, if you're thinking about the timing, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight letters. That's 80 minutes of drying time. So you have to, you have to put, put that into perspective. So you have an hour and a half of drying time between the letters. So, but that's okay because the whole thing's gonna take 400 billion bajillion hours um, and we'll be finished with it sometime next year. Uh, so it's okay. Important, you don't touch this. You might have a little bit of dust, which is really frustrating. And before you activate it, you wanna to try to get all the dust off everywhere. But if you touch this with your fingers, well, then you're gonna contaminate it, and that's no good. Now this is the activator, so you just wanna put a very, very thin coat on of the activator. Real, real thin. Doesn't need to be anything crazy, but we do want to get it all activated. And you can't see where you've been with the activator because it is clear. So you just make sure you've got everything. If you haven't, you can go back and activate it. If you've missed a spot and you notice it and you're like, oh man, you can go back and reactivate. But I just like to be pretty thorough and make sure I hit everywhere. Okay, now we wait 10 minutes. This is the leaf I use. 24 karat gold real leaf and it's called triple leaf what that means is it's it's three times as thick so this is going to be extra 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 durable um, using it outdoors and it's actually this little pack it's so thin it's barely thicker than a business card it's actually heavy like you can feel the weight of the gold it's 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 pretty impressive um yeah so this is what we're going to be using but if you want to put it outside on a transom, you want triple leaf. It's been 10 minutes. Our activator should be nice and dry. Here's where the petrolatum comes in to play. What we do, we take a little bit, and I mean a little bit, just, you don't wanna go crazy with this. I'm gonna put it on my hand. Just a light, very, very light coating. If you put too much, you're gonna foul things and ruin everything. So, just a very light coating. Okay, so we have that on our hand, all right? Now we need the leaf. Here's our leaf. It, it helps if you don't breathe when you do this. So if you can hold your breath for an hour or two, that's the best usually. Um, 
But we have our gilder's tip here, and this is how we do this. You open this up, and we must be exceedingly careful. One little tissue papery deal at a time. See that? Just doing that already. I, I messed up the leaf. But we're just going to wipe this on the Vaseline and then pick up the leaf. There's that. So we're going to apply this now. Once it's on this paint, you can almost consider it just fouled. See that? That's not good. Now, I'm going to close this, and I'm going to use our tool. This is a leaf tool, and this is specifically for poking leaf down at a hard-to-get places. Now we got that done, we'll take our special tissue set. This is made by Kohlner, the people that make the Instacall. And we're going to go ahead and rub this down. And you want to rub it really in one direction. smooths all down. We want to make sure that we're all good here. Yeah. Okay. You can remove the excess here. Typically you want to try to take a brush. I use actually a camel hair makeup brush in my shop, but I'm just going to use a paintbrush. You brush off the excess and it comes right off. The final trick I use to remove it without, you don't want to, I don't want to mess up the the polish the shine of the paint so I use autosol polish and it just kind of it works as an eraser it just takes it right off so you just go right up to the edge and we get a nice crisp edge to this and there we have it there's an S and you see this stuff the instacall they call it a liquid burnisher it looks burnished. See how reflective that is? It looks burnished. It's it's shinier and more reflective than than another other forms of gold leaf you can use. It's great. On to the rest.
Well, another late night. It's 11.15, but boy, it was worth it. That's pretty. I'm going to rack out. And then we'll look at this tomorrow during the daylight, but man, looks awesome. Yeah, very, very cool. Shalimar! There it is. Check it out. Man, turned out awesome. That looks great. Just great. Yep. Beautiful. So, now, almost time to put it on the boat. Man, so pretty. This is Kim. Hi. She has come back from sailing in Europe. She was in Valencia, Spain for a while, and she's gonna be here. You'll see her helping me with the boat. So, she's awesome. Sailor, she's a rigger, she does woodworking. So, this ought to be a lot of fun. <laughs> I was not prepared for this. So, we're just figuring out the name board here. Just wanted to see what it looked like. Looks amazing. Just got it on strings. It's gonna go a little higher, actually, than this. But I just wanted to see, before we actually put it on there, kind of what it'll look like. And man, it looks awesome. Really, really awesome. So we're gonna tape the transom off so that way we don't go scratching the finish that I put on here. Uh, then we're gonna mark everything and drill through the tape when we put the name board on. If you remember, I chiseled a channel for the wires for the stern light. Well, the last thing I want to do is put a screw into that. So we're going to mark where that channel is. So hopefully we don't do that. Now we want to measure the distance down. And I want it to be the same as it was. So how I'm going to do that is with this. The previous owner put a steering vane, a wind vane on, and this was the pad he used, and this was right up against the cap rail, and this was right up against the top of the name board. So this is a perfect spacer. We're also gonna mark our center line. We have the center, we have the top, we have the wires. Now, I want to clearly see the wires so I do not make any mistakes here. We won't put any fasteners where the green tape is. That ought to keep us safe with the wires. Now, the next thing we need to do, because you can't drive any screws into where there's already fasteners in the transom, we also have to mark that. Climb down and tell me what you think. We're going to use a tape measure here once we get a fastener in it, but how's that? As far as left to right? Uh, is that right on? Yeah, but I think it is. Well, it's, this is centered, line up with center. All right, come up here. Thank <laughs> you. 
What we have to do now is pull all the screws, uh, take it back off, remove this, then I'm going to sand this down, make sure it's nice, and then we're going to mix up a dolphinite mixture. It's a dolphinite pine tar and rot resistant primer and put it back on there. So, but that's it. Mixing up our bedding compound for this. About this thick. Not, not real thick, but. cut the plugs we got to trim the plugs down there on the name board the issue is they are really 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 close to everything painted and all kinds of stuff I don't want to screw up so we need to make a little shield and I'm going to show you how to do that you take a piece this is just a flap of a milk carton any thin any thin plastic will do so we got half inch plugs and I have a half inch drill bit. So we're gonna just go with the drill bit that we got. So this tool here, what I made, is to kind of protect us from doing any kind of damage to the surrounding stuff here. See? Now we've cut it off and we haven't damaged the paint. It just keeps the tool from wrecking everything because it, it will if it's allowed to. See? Cut into the plastic. If this wasn't there, I would have just gouged the crap out of the sign. What a full circle I've made. Yeah, it's one of the first things I did when I got here in the yard. Let's take that name board off and find out the transom was rotten. And now it's back on. Ah, and it looks great. It just looks absolutely beautiful. 
I love the way the gold shines. Yeah, it's so nice. Yep, all right, excellent. See you on the next one.